is okay. So it's not right here. Okay, no, it's not right. killer. Right hand to prevent the girl from screaming. Hold on, I gotta go back and see this. And so, Holmes. Okay, so fine. He won't do that again. Thanks a lot, Watson. You are a horrible person. You are bad, and you should do that. Let's try the left hand. Give her a strangled victim with his with no, no, of course not. His right hand. Yeah. Kill the big man. No. Strong man. No. Poor man. No. So. Okay. The least murder or beat the victim. Bruce. Hard pressure for finger. The, yeah, the okay. victim was most probably dead before Gosh. being laid down. Once the heart stopped, gravity drained the body slowly, not in a heavy spurt that would have stained half the street. Thank you, Holmes. I understand why you told me not to change clothes. Do you realize that our behavior didn't alarm anyone? The victim's ordeal was even more discreet. By acting in silence, we have confirmed something. The crime definitely took cool. place here. The victim and her murderer were able to come here without making any noise, and afterwards the murder took place without the slightest cry being uttered. Come, Watson, let's go home. We have spent far too long in this sinister, sinister alley. Sinister alleys of Britain, Great Britannia. And so, my dear Watson, the day and night which we passed in Whitechapel were enlightening, yes, weren't they? An adventure that I most certainly will never relate, to be in the skin of that Poor woman. I prefer not to speak of it further. But have we really learned anything about the murderer? Obviously a man, given the necessary strength. We have little to go on, at least no more than the police. But in my opinion, Inspector Abiline has a trick or two up his sleeve. No, I want to talk about the facts and what we can draw from them. We know where the crime was committed and under what conditions. I would like to ask you about the possible motives for the crime. According to you, Watson, what could have pushed the murderer to um, act in such a way? Anger, violence. Looking for the possible motives for the crime. I have no idea. Possible motive. Um, madness. Yes. The victim suffered horrible mutilations. Well, that is true. Homicidal insanity, Holmes. It is indubitable that the man who did this to Polly Nichols is not of his full senses. Okay. Credible motive, even if the field that Sherlock, even if it's a field that Sherlock doesn't know. It. The victim was an occasional prostitute without family or ties. The victim lived in misery. Resentment can lead to irresponsible or irreparable. Revenge, Holmes? Revenge could be a possible motive, but with one small reservation, we have reason to believe that the victim considered her murderer to be a typical client. Oh, so probably not revenge. Credible motive, even if it's a field that Sherlock doesn't know. Love, that's gonna be the last no? Black magic. Black magic? I'm not terribly interested in the occult or black magic. Let's give the benefit of the doubt to this motive. Maybe. The victim lived in misery. So it'd be theft. Mm. No. Theft, perhaps. I have a hard time believing that someone would attack poor Polly so fiercely just to rob her of a few coins. A personal drama. Love can certainly lead to many a drama, but we have to consider the fact that the victim didn't yeah, know I her know attacker. That. Probably madness or black magic. Well, we are still missing certain information in order to finish well, this well, investigation, you guys are Watson. Miles away from... Oh, maybe. Given possible motives, I have no idea. And I have a conclusion. Nicholas, murder on premises. Yes, yes, that's true. The murder cut off Polly's throat. Yes, no idea. Nicholas, right handed. Yeah. Great, okay. Don't know anything. Deduction resume. 
Well, we are still missing certain information in order to finish this Definitely. investigation, Watson. What are we doing, Holmes? Okay, I guess we're not done with this yet. Hmm. Uh. Theft. I have... Homicidal ins... It is indubitable that the man who did this to Polly Nichols is not of his so full senses. Yes. Homicidal insanity. It is indubitable. Black magic? Okay, I'm so not terribly interested. Black magic. Probably not black magic. Probably not love, probably not revenge. Revenge, Holmes? Revenge maybe, could okay, be maybe a possible revenge, mo maybe revenge. Well, we are uh, still missing darn it. Well, we are still missing darn you, Holmes. Darn you and your inability to tell Oh. Okay. Elementary. Well, whoops. Very well. Didn't mean to hit spacebar or whatever I hit. Ah, it would seem that the investigation is advancing, Holmes. Yesterday's star said that a suspect is in the hands of the police, a man with a rather sinister reputation. I was about to join you in your optimistic outlook until you informed me that the good news came from the press, Watson. But surely they wouldn't invent the fact that the police are holding a suspect or the acts that are attributed to him. You will have an exact answer to these two questions in less than 50 seconds, Watson. Pardon? Enter, Inspector. My goodness, Mr. Holmes, you can predict the future. Good day. Dear Watson, allow me to introduce uh. Inspector Abeline. Inspector, Dr. Watson. Inspector? To what do we owe the honor of your presence, Inspector? I heard that the two of you made your way to Whitechapel a few days ago. Your arrival, you are aware, coincides with a very serious affair which our police service is going to great lengths to solve and which is creating strong tensions in the area. Pardon me, but haven't you arrested someone? A certain leather apron? Absolutely not. The man who hides behind this name is indeed being actively searched for by the force. Besides, nothing at the moment suggests that he is the Bucks Row murderer. There, you've been enlightened, Watson. Now it is our turn to answer Inspector Abelard's ha, questions. Watson, in your face. Indeed. I will be brief and precise. Do you intend to investigate this case, have or have you started. already started? It is to be of service to a friend that I went to Whitechapel. We did, out of curiosity, familiarize ourselves with the preliminary reports, and we made our way to the scene of the crime. Our conclusions are slim, as are the clues. Having not been officially appointed by a client, I believe that my intervention in this business will end there. Very well. To be frank, you take the weight off my shoulders by distancing yourself I from think the he's case. Lying. Our image isn't I, very I good. Think you're keep to say going. nothing of what the press puts us through. Thus, if overnight they found out that you were on the case, people would turn against us. And they would pest me, overwhelm me, and finally make me out to be responsible for the inevitable failure such a scenario entails. Neither you nor I wish for this to happen. I know that your time is precious, Inspector. I will send you a note regarding my conclusions shortly. With pleasure. Still Gentlemen? haven't figured out why there are bullet holes. Do you think that he will find the murderer? The chances are slim to non-existent. It is seven days now, short of a confession from the murderer himself. And you will not go further? You heard the Inspector Watson. My presence in Whitechapel would hinder, which doesn't mean that we will drop the case. How is that? The Inspector spoke of me, but not of us. It is you, Watson, who will lead the investigation tonight. It is you who will bring to the police station the little note that I will write regarding our conclusions. Despite the late hour, there is nothing to stop you from making inquiries about this famous leather apron while you are there. Oh, Mr. Oh, I'm controlling Dr. Watson. Dr. Watson. Uh, Mr. Watson. The name's Bond. Sherlock Bond. This is just me those bullet holes. Looks like V-R. Huh. Oh, well. Don't know. What's in here? A bedroom. Oh, my gosh. A bedroom. Can we take a nap? Can we go to sleep? Oh, those are cool glasses. I like the glasses. Hey, look, it's a bust. London or bust. Ha ha ha. Why can't I move forward? What the heck? Darn you, W key, and your broken, not working correctliness. T. Open. There you go. 
Where are we off to now? Clinic. Uh, let's go to the police station. Because I think that's where I have to go. Well, if I follow Holmes's instructions, then to begin my investigation into this leather apron, I must first See? head to I, the police I station. I figured that. I guessed that. To the police station. Anyone else in here this time? Nope, just this lonely old guy. Good evening, sir. What do you... No, oh, I skipped that. I'm sorry. He was all like, oh, oh you were here with Bond. Indeed. I have come to bring a message from Sherlock Holmes for Inspector Aberline. Very well, I will pass it on. But come to think of it, someone was asking about you recently. Fiddly, the caretaker of some shady boarding house nearby. Does that mean anything to you? Ah, perhaps. Actually, I read in the Star that you have arrested a suspect called Leather Apron. You shouldn't believe what you read in that rag, sir. The man is being hunted, but we have yet to get our hands on him. And we aren't close to it either. Why ever not? Bah, he's a specialist in the streetwalker racket. These girls make pitiful witnesses, and we don't inspire confidence. Furthermore, the man seems to be pretty discreet lately. Someone must be helping to hide him. How to get on his trail, then? One of these girls would have to confide in us and give a valid description of the man. Then we'd ask around the journeymen, who use aprons, I imagine. Well, goodbye. I must go to Finley's boarding house. Her Majesty Queen Victoria. What would she think of this mess? I have nothing to ask. It's you, Dr. Watson. Well, and yourself? Oh, he sleeps a lot, but it doesn't seem to be suffering. Your medicine has worked wonders. Thank you again. It was the least I could do. I have come to see you about a certain leather apron. Have you heard of him? Oh, yes, of course. Terrible things are said about that man. Have you ever come across him? Goodness gracious, no. But I know that he has threatened and taken many girls in uh, my situation. I don't know what more I can say, but um, Bella would be able to tell you some. Who is Bella? Bella Pullman. She's the landlady of the place where I... Uh, I could take you there if you like. Please do. It's me. It's Lucy. This gentleman would like to speak to Bella. It's the doctor who helped me. I must leave to return to my uncle. Thanks again. 